And it, but it's clear that it was already a showman and a promoter. Around 1936, Barker started a business they named the Melton Barker Juvenile Productions and began filming his script, The Kidnapper's Foil. He went around the country, town to town, until his death in 1977. For 40 plus years, uh, while on the road, he died while on the road, presumably heading to the next town, and another go at the kidnapper's foil. It is very hard to get an accurate number of how many times he filmed this script, but the kidnapper's foil, what our best guess is that is 280 times. There are approximately 30 that are known to exist. You have three of them in your community. Now, throughout the first half of the 20th century, there were many itinerant filmmakers, and itinerant means traveling filmmakers. These, these traveling filmmakers went throughout this, this country and other countries, make, and making a living filming documentaries and then some fictional stories. But what made Melvin Barker unique was his commitment to repeatedly filming the same script, the kidnapper's product of foil, over and over, and his longevity as an itinerant filmmaker. In 2012, the Library of Congress added the kidnapper's foil to the National Film Registry. The National Film Registry, which began in 1988, is a very select honor, as the Library of Congress selects only 25 films per year to be added to this list. And this, these are films the Library of Congress deems as culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant to American film heritage. And I just wonder if Mel Park would feel about such an honor, but I can pretty much assure that he would use it in his next advertising campaign. <laughs> Now, what is nitrate film? I get that asked all the time. And how is the Library of Congress handling the preservation of the Earth's Adventures of Oil film? Well, nitrate film was the industry standard film base material from the late 1880s until the early 1950s. So if you think of your classic films, your favorite ones, Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, Casablanca, It's a Wonderful Life, you name it. All of those were shot on nitrate camera negative. They were all then shown on nitrate printed film. So nitrate film, when projected though, is seen to have a sparkle that so far cannot be replicated by modern film safety stock. The reason for that sparkle is that nitrate film contains real silver, hence we get the moniker the silver screen. Although nitrate is a very good film base, it is chemically unstable and therefore prone to chemical deterioration. It is it's truly amazing that your films, although they were neglected and stored improperly for many, many years, uh, before their recent discovery, these films show virtually no deterioration. The most famous drawback of nitrate film is it's extremely flammable. If ignited, it will burn explosively, and it is very difficult to extinguish because as it burns, it creates its own oxygen. So, it can burn under water, it can burn under vacuum, or etc. This fact alone makes nitrate film dangerous to store. So there's only a few places in the world where this, they, they have it equipped to handle this storage. The Library of Congress has been storing nitrate films since the 1960s. Today, their collection is approximately 90 miles of shelf space, which holds 160,000 reels of nitrate film. Or, if you want to put it in feet, it's about 100 million feet of film. Your copies of the Kidnapper Foil, which was shot in 1937, are on Kodak Nitrate film stock, and they are stored safely in the nitrate vaults of the Library of Congress. The nitrate film vaults are kept at 39 degrees, 30% in energy. The nitrate films have been inspected on a regular basis, and they're, if there's any deterioration, and they have been given a new 4K scan, a digital scan, which you see today. For long-term storage, nitrate films have been given a film-to-film -film transfer on the new safety stock, and it's preserved properly. That copy can last for over 100 years. Another question I get is how did I know about these films and where and why was I looking for them? Well, remarkably, eBay has a large part in my experience in film preservation. Now, if you know what eBay is, think of the world's biggest garage sale. Uh, it's a buyer to buyer to seller, sale to sale to sale. It's for, it was it, eBay introduced me to my volunteering experience at the Library of Congress in Nitrate Falls and later finding the kidnappers foil films. In the 1999, I, just, I purchased an item from eBay from a gentleman named Larry Smith, who wrote that he was a nitrate film specialist at the Library of Congress. I knew what nitrate film was, but I was curious about the job. So I asked him about it, and he told me that the vaults were located at that time in Dayton, Ohio. They're currently located in Culpeper, Virginia. 
Interestingly enough, my parents lived only an hour from Dayton, and I thought, well, maybe my next trip home, I'll stop in and take a look. So I asked him, is there a tour I can take? He says, no, we're not an official tour, but if you want to come by, you know, let me put you in contact with George Bowman, who is the nitrate uh, film manager there at the Library of Congress. He's been there for 30 plus years. So I contacted George and scheduled a visit. And after spending most of the afternoon in the unofficial tour, George mentioned that if I ever wanted to volunteer, that's something I could do. So I took him up on his offer, and I've been volunteering since 1999. Well, somewhere around 2001, 2002, was the first time I ever heard of the kidnapper's foil. My memory of that introduction was that George Willeman began telling me about Milton Barber. He was telling me the story about his, him going from town to town, and he said, you know, we've got a few of these films here, why don't I show you one? So we watched the film, and I was impressed with the film, but what hooked me was Milton Barber's story, and how he filmed that script over and over, and town to town. So I thought, well, let me see if I can find a collection, see if I can find in my collection. So for the last 14 plus years, I've been watching on eBay and various places where you have collectible films are sold, hoping to find a chance to buy a copy of the Kidnapper Spoil. So the question next is, how did I acquire the films and where were they found? Well, in October 2016, I saw a listing on eBay. It's a rare Mel Parker film, Kidnapper Spoil, 35mm print. All I can say is, the seller had my attention to tell that Melvin Barker. <coughs> I was told by the seller that he this box of film, this box right here, right in front. I was told by the seller that the box of film was found during the renovation of the Apollo Theater here in Springdale. They were found under a pile of rubble of brick and other construction material. They were all heading for the landfill. Instead of disposing of this metal box right there, he decided to look inside. To his amazement, he found reels of film that he thought might be important, so he took them home and he did some more research. Eventually, he moved the duo to, to a local college professor who told him that these were films made by Melvin Barber. Although he's not a film collector himself, he recognized the historic value and he hoped that someday he could get them to somebody, so he put them on eBay. And he was hoping that somebody would buy them and then continue research and bring them back to the public eye. Well, during the negotiations, with him, and then while awaiting their arrival to my house, I, my curiosity was, this is a big metal box. Milton Barker's films are usually one, maybe two reels. Why were there four reels in this box? So when they arrived, I opened the box, put the first can film, can film on, on my rewind in my office, and then my excitement said, Milton Barker, kidnapper spoil. And I, I then rolled down the images long enough to realize I was looking at a real copy of the kidnapper spoil. I was very excited, but I was also very curious, now why do I have three other reels of film? So I took the second reel out, and to my surprise, the, the head title again said Melvin Barker Presents. Well, th there's no way there's another copy of this film in this box. I just thought they used it as a, maybe it was a film leader or some kind of head title that was not tied to the film it was attached to. As I rolled down the images, I realized, sure enough, I'm looking at another copy, another version of the kidnapper's foil. I quickly reviewed the process of the third reel, and it too was a kidnapper's foil film. The fourth was a talent portion from the Benton film film. Finding a once in a lifetime find such as this is very exciting. But finding three once in a lifetime films together in one box is a little bit mind blowing. Now, how did we get here today? In December of 2016, I took, up, took a full reel to the Library of Congress and spent most of the time that week trying to identify the towns from where we found where these films were found. I knew the films were found in Springdale, but I was not sure that Springdale was even any one of the towns that were filmed. These films don't say on the title of the shop in Springdale. They just say they're on the park. So I looked at the films frame by frame, photographed any interesting details of buildings or back background images that I could find. And now, and now, for example, in the Fayetteville film, you'll see that you, there's actually a license plate and a newspaper that both say Arkansas, but they don't attempt to identify the town. So there were things like that that you could see that gave me an idea it was still from Arkansas. So in the evening hours, I would take, I would look at the pictures that I took from that day, and I would Google historic buildings here in Springdale and other towns that surround us, looking for a match of anything, any house, any building. The first building to be identified was the Harris Hotel in Rogers. And it is, now that's where the talent portion was shot for these films. By the end of the week, I was pretty confident these films were from Fayetteville, Springdale, and Rogers. 
It wasn't until later that the Rogers film was correctly identified as Bendigo. Now, during this time, I began to search Google again for any historic societies or museums from any of these three towns that would give me possibly any additional information confirming the filming detail. My first contact with the Google search was the Shiloh Museum. I looked at the website, got Marie, Marie's contact information, and sent her an email stating that I had found these films. I had mentioned a bit about Malcolm Mount Parker, and she read earlier that email. Uh, it was, it, I was just looking for any information that didn't want to burden her if she didn't want to know about it or didn't have, didn't, didn't have any interest in it. But almost immediately, Marie responded to my email. Her first words were, wow, we've known all about the stones, but we didn't know they existed, though. I'm so happy you found them. Over the next few days, were a barrage of emails from Marie asking one question after another and sharing details on detail of Arkansas and Melvin Parker's visits to your area. Within weeks, the idea of a premiere was being planned, and soon guests were being invited, and finally newspapers and radio promotions was in full swing. Your town and this region of Arkansas are so blessed to have a dedicated and talented people preserving your local history. And it's been my honor to work with Marie and the Shadow Museum, and I'm in awe of their love and commitment to you. 